day. Uh, maybe as of now, the judiciary does not have the jurisdiction uh, to impose UCC from tomorrow. But can they at least intervene in some man manner? Uh, Subhash Jha, sir, if you could come in here. Can the judiciary at least uh, ask the government to form a draft to start or expedite this uh, exercise, uh, which they speak of today uh, when they say that they need to read all the scriptures and look very, very closely at laws which govern various religions? In my assessment, the exercise itself is in futility. Article 44 of the Constitution is a constitutional mandate which guarantees uniform civil court to all its citizens throughout the territories of India. Where is the question of then uh, the Supreme Court? Supreme Court doesn't, doesn't legislate. It only interprets the law. It doesn't legislate. But certainly, if there is a constitution in place and if still there is no law for the time being in force, uh, even after 75 years of our independence, cannot the Supreme Court say that legislate, can, cannot it direct the, the Union of India to, to legislate? Now, please see, this is not for the first time that the issue has fallen for consideration before the Supreme Court. I may tell you 27 years before in the matter of Shah Banu case, uh, incidentally, the, the judgment, the bench was headed by, uh, it's a constitution bench judgment, which was headed by Justice, none other than Justice Y.B. Chandra Chud, the father of the next, uh, who is going to be the next Chief Justice of yeah. India, Justice D.Y. Chandra Chud. Now, he authored a judgment, and let us see what he said. He said something about Article 44 of the Constitution has remained a dead letter. It provides that the state shall endeavor to secure for citizens a uniform civil court. So it was deprecated in not having a civil common civil court in 227 years before. Now, if you remember uh, Shah Bano's case, the famous case, 125 maintenance, it was upset by the then Rajiv Gandhi government. government yes. Now, after 10 years in 1995, in the matter of Sarla Mudgal, the matter once again fallen for consideration about. Uh, prosecution under 494 of a man of a hindu or a muslim because muslim can marry four but after 1955 hindu marriage act a hindu cannot marry second wife so he can be prosecuted in section 494 that matter travels to the supreme court and the supreme court what does it say in para 37 and 38 of the judgment in Kul, uh, in sarla mudgal's case it says 37 we therefore request the government of India through the Prime Minister of the country to have a fresh look at Article 44 of the Constitution of India, endeavor to secure the citizens' uniform civil court throughout the territory of India. 38. We therefore direct the government of India through Secretary Ministry of Law, Justice to file an affidavit of a responsible officer in this court, August 1996, indicating therein the steps taken and efforts made by the government of India towards securing uniform civil court. That's a clear-cut direction. Now, we are pondering over this issue even after 17 years. And okay. this is the government which came into power promising and assuring its citizen uniform civil court. I think the law officers who filed the affidavit, uh, in my assessment, uh, they have committed a big, big blunder. According to me, he should be all the, the persons responsible for filing such atrocious affidavit in the Supreme Court, saying that the petition is not maintainable. What is there to maintain? Ashwini Upadhyaya is seeking to remind perhaps the, uh, the Supreme Court and the government that what has been said in the past 27 years back, 75 years after independence, mm. and we are struggling for such issue, which is not an issue at all in my assessment. Okay, what I take your point and uh, obviously it's the founding fathers also who wanted it if, you know, one was to read what B.R. Ambedkar.